I can't cut that in. There might be kids watching. All right. So Annie's back. This is my fiance, Annie. Uh, I've had a lot of time to do these episodes because she was gone in the US. Uh, now she's back and uh, it's gonna be interesting to still be able to produce these episodes without using this beautiful relationship. <laughs> um, but I can do it and so uh, we'll, we'll figure this out. So let's get started with last week's show file. You can find that as a download in the video description and like that you can follow along. So first of all, let's just as always uh, turn everything off that's currently playing. Just hit off twice and then hit every of these items down here. What I also want to do is just delete these sequences um, and then go ahead and delete this position preset window. Go over to sheets and then go sequence content. That will actually help us later. And first of all, what I want to do, I actually want to create a small sequence that will help us to find out more about how to move around and insert cues and also delete them, but that's the most straightforward here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, after I clicked on the LED bars group icon, I'm going to do a little trick that you will learn about later. I'm actually going to use MA tricks. Now if I turn off or turn on highlight, you can see that I'm not stepping through our LED cells uh, one by one, but actually in blocks of 24. And that means that I can all of a sudden hop through my top LED bars in just four steps. And that's exactly what I wanted to have. I just want to create a small sequence. Turning highlight off again so I can see my programming value values. I'm hitting add add to set the dimmer value to full. You can see that here it's open. Now I'm going to go store at zero and we're doing that because of tracking. So the default in Granite 2 is whenever you set a value in a queue, it stays on until you explicitly tell it to turn off again. And then uh, go add add again, store a second one at zero, please. Go to the next one at add store. Add zero, please. Add, add the last one, store. And now if we clear the programmer values and hop through this thing, that's exactly what we wanted. Perfect. Now what I wanna do is actually move this last queue and move it up to be the second queue. So like that, our little sequence doesn't go through the top LED bars anymore, but sort of like left, right, left, right. So left, right, upper, left, right, lower if you know what I mean. And like that, we should be able to see how you can move around uh, cues and actually change their order. Now, here comes the little bit of the tricky part. This is not um, very intuitive, unfortunately. Uh, if you stumbled upon this little dialog by right-clicking on the number column, then, um, you know, you might have tried reordering cues with that dialog. Unfortunately, that does not work. Uh, Granime 2 states in their manual that this is not to reorder cues, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. Also, any sort of drag and drop operations that you would usually find in a modern uh, table view like that in any sort of other, you know, software, uh, it also doesn't exist here. So what we're sort of stuck with are the command keys. Now, first of all, um, if you want to move a queue, what you want to do is actually um, go move executor, and this is executor 208, so 208, and then specify the queue that you want to move. In this case, let's just move queue, I don't know, um, one to the end of the stack, maybe. Um, one at, and now you can pick whatever number you like. Um, and this is sort of strange because you can actually go move at 1000. So now if we go please, and we go back in here, you can see that the first queue doesn't exist anymore. Now it's actually behind all the other queues and it's called queue 1000. Now, if we step through our sequence, let's just turn this off so we can actually start from the top. If we now step through our sequence, you can see the first queue is not there anymore. Now we can see a problem though with moving around queues. So remember how we always sort of reset uh, the values of the previous step so that the tracking uh, won't leave it turned on? Well, now we have exactly that problem. 
um, in this step over here, or rather in this first step, we didn't turn anything off. And now, um, you know, we have the problem that this is not the look that we expected. Welcome to the beautiful world of tracking. I personally have only found it to be a huge headache. So what you want to do, and this is the easiest option, go to assign, where is it? Assign, click on the executor, go to the options and then turn off tracking. Just simple as that. What you can actually do is also go and save default sequence options like that. Tracking will always be off by default. This is also a menu that we'll actually take a look at in um, the next two episodes. So don't worry about the details of it too much. Uh, just know that you can turn off tracking and now it works like a charm because every cue um, is just seen as an individual um, step that will turn something off. And right, if you go to the next step, then MA2 will just drop all and every value that was set in a previous step. Perfect, that's exactly, I think, what we all expected. So we already saw how we can move around this one queue, and you can see that it doesn't really matter where you move it to. It's, it can be a ridiculous number. Now, what I wanted to do is actually um, move, leave this first queue where it is and just move uh, the last queue to be in the second place. So let's just move our queue back. And also, um, if you go select and select an executor, what you can do is just go move queue. Where is it? Q1000 at 1. And now we're back to our regular thing. Now, if we want to move Q4 at position 2, what we will see is this warning window. So now when we're trying to move Q4 onto the position of Q2, what we will see is this uh, warning window right here. And Unfortunately, it doesn't give you any options. Um, you can only override the existing content or abort the whole operation. So that's what we have to do. So what you would have to do in theory is actually go in here and change all these queues, starting with this one. So move Q4 to 5, 3 to 4, uh, 2 to 3. I actually tried to work with the queue or with the, with the through keyword here, but that didn't really work. So one trick that we can actually use, and this will sound really dumb, but one thing that we can actually use is move the Q4 to a Q that's larger than one, but smaller than two. And that will actually work. So what you want to do is go move Q4, add something greater than one, but smaller than two, 1.1. And now you can see that this is exactly what we wanted. Isn't that great? So this should sort of give you an idea of how you can actually move around, but also insert cues. All you want to do is uh, set it to a fraction of a number, not set it to one or two or three, but set it to 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. I mean, after a while, your cues will look like crap, but you know, who cares? You managed to perform a basic operation that shouldn't be this hard. So congratulations to you. <laughs> God damn. All right. Um, you might already have figured out how you can actually insert a queue. But um, in case you didn't, let me do that for you. So just go and hit delete on this one queue that we just moved around. So now it's just queue one, two, three. So the fourth one is missing. Um, that's actually unfortunate. So whenever you fuck something up, you just go, oops, and then click that a few times. And now we have four cues again. So let me just delete the second queue. There you go. And now we just have those three cues. So let's go ahead and insert that second queue that we're missing right now. And in order to do that, I'm going to select my LED bars again. I'm going to use that trick that I'm going to show you in a coming episode of using a matrix for the selection. Hit next, next. That's the second queue. Perfect. Let's just go add, add, and then store inside of this sequence. Now what you saw is that 
we didn't really see the real output in the programmer because this was still on. So that's why I always clear out all the sequences just because it can be confusing to program something nicely if um, you still have sequence running. So now just hit go and now we can see uh, the queue that we wanted is there, it's just in the wrong place. And what's cool is that if we go in here, we see one, three, four, because guess what? Grandma also doesn't remember these things. Uh, so now we actually have the second queue missing because we had it there in the first place and then deleted it for this example. So this will make it really easy to move the queue five to the position of queue two. You can also leave this open, by the way. Um, it's just a little harder to see what you're doing, but Granimate 2 actually highlights what you're doing. So just go and enter this command. Move Q5 at 2, please. And that's only possible because we already selected the correct executor. Uh, if you hadn't done that, you would have wanted to specify the executor as well. So that's how you insert a queue. I mean, you know, same example as before. We could have also gone move Q5. That's now Q2 at 1.1. And like that, it would have been right after the first Q and before anything greater, like to Q3, whatever. All right, and that's how you can insert, move, and delete queues. It's sort of a hassle, and what you definitely want to do is turn off tracking for this to work properly. Um, and also, it's a real pain in the ass to have to do, because this is one of the examples where Granime 2 requires you to enter a string of command keywords in order to do something that other software products, no matter what field, uh, it can be even as simple as Google Sheets, for example, uh, actually let you work with your mouse or finger gestures or something else. But that's one of the main problems that I have with this console. Sometimes the user experience isn't even at the most basic of levels and you have to do a lot of work to perform very basic tasks. And that's something that I really hope will be better in Granime 3. So I'm really excited for Granime 3, but for now, I'm most excited about you subscribing to this channel, liking the Facebook page, and uh, being back here next week. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments on YouTube, or if you're on Facebook, just leave them below this video. So thanks if you're already part of the Facebook group. If you're interested in joining this really friendly community of learners where you get very fast help, um, then just join us through the link in the video description. And other than that, thanks for watching and have a great fucking week. Bye-bye.